All right there, YouTube, Facebook, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with the incredible Mr. Adam Falara. We are at the Schwidwin uh, Electric yes. Guitar Festival and we've just seen some really, really amazing playing and I watched Adam play last night and he was, as usual, incredible. Um, and since I've got him here, I thought I would ask him some questions. So Adam, I'd like to take you back in time. Let's go back in time. So um, well, when, when did you actually start playing? Uh, I started playing at uh, age 11 and first my instrument was accordion oh, okay. I, and I, uh, I took lessons in uh, music school for, for six years on accordion mm -hmm. and during the school I started to play guitar so uh, it was when I was 15 I started to play guitar then I was shredding then after five years of hard practicing shredding on guitar, uh -huh. uh, when I practice things like Young V. Malmsteen and things like this, uh, I switched to two-handed tapping. And then after three years, I switched to double neck guitars. And then after three years, I switched to counterpoint improvisation. And it's always all, all changes uh, makes uh, crea creativity step uh -huh. Uh, uh -huh. because Always, it's something new to master. Mm, okay, so so let's just take that in little chunks. Um, when you when you switch from accordion to guitar, mm -hmm. were you still having lessons, or were you just self-taught uh, no, on the guitar? No, no, uh, I'm uh, self-learned. So uh, I I didn't make uh, take another lessons, mm -hmm. but uh, I uh, started to play gigs mm -hmm. and uh, meet. Uh, another musicians mm -hmm. and it was uh, bigger and bigger events and uh, I took maybe it's not a lesson but uh, when you meet something who is playing learn. very well mm -hmm. uh, then you learn a lot from him mm -hmm. and I have pleasure to meet for example Andy Timmons mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I was uh, with him in hotel for one week and then we talk about uh, music wow. all the time wow. and this was this was one of the greatest lesson i take about music right. with him and uh, ma many uh, other uh, like paul gilbert like uh, maybe uh, Joshua stefan or uh, maybe uh, many of them mm, okay so so after you've been going through your shred phase what, what attracted you to, to two-handed playing? Uh, I, when I started to play accordion, uh, for me, the most important was uh, counterpoint. Yeah. And uh, it always been the same. So when I play, for example, Kazachok, which is a, a Russian composition for accordion, it was not interesting for me. But when I started to play Bach, it was always great. And uh, uh, when I start to shred, um, I was missing it. Mm. And um, and I thought that it would be a nice idea, idea to, to, to get a counterpoint on guitar. And this is the method, uh, I, I, uh, this, this was the reason I started to play with two-handed tapping. Okay, okay. And so how did you go about doing that? Did you take your accordion skills and transfer them yes, onto the guitar? Yes, uh, uh, there is uh, uh, all dances and melodies, uh, such book for accordion mm -hmm. uh, with uh, baroque music, very easy. And I started from that, uh, from playing counterpoint from that. It's a very easy menuet and so things like this. And I put them in my 200 tapping guitar book mm. later. I I, as, uh, it was my, my beginning, tune by tune. And you should, if you want to play with 200 tapping, you should try the, the tunes, to the same method. Okay. So, uh, for instance, on YouTube you can find videos of you playing things like the, you know, the Goldberg variations and a lot mm -hmm. of complicated stuff. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how, how comparatively easy or difficult did you find to learn that material? Uh, yes, it was difficult uh, for, I, I mean, uh, you, it's, it's, it's easy. It's easy, but you have to spend a lot of hours to practice it. Right. And uh, people do this like this, but it's difficult to play to master it really mm. like Glenn Gould for example mm. but it's it's not about uh, hours spending on playing it's about idea of interpretation uh -huh. and uh, it's uh, it's a thing that I'm not very good at so uh, I, I did my versions just like shred it's uh, sh more shred back yes yes uh, and uh, it was very fast and uh, uh, I, I, I get more popularity but, but it's musical not not good right okay uh, however having said that you should absolutely go and check out adam's versions of these tunes because uh, the technique on display is absolutely jaw-dropping 
Okay. Uh, I, think, I think nobody plays the tunes better uh, till now, even yeah, no, so. <laughs> even if it's not Glenn Gould version. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, so, so when you went through that phase of playing all that classical music, at some point you switched from doing that into doing more sort of jazz and improvisation. Mm -hmm. uh, the the reason was when I start to shred. The main goal was to learn improvisation, and uh, since er uh, early beginning, when when I started to play guitar, I want to improvise all the time. Mm. We, even in rock band, even if we play Metallica or something, then I play Metallica solo and add something always. Mm. And uh, then, I, I, then uh, when I start counterpoint, I I, I was uh, I was missing this improvisation element, and I c connected it to. To get a counterpoint improvisation uh, as my goal, and then uh, I realized that in guitar world the most important thing is own style, and this is the the thing nobody does it. Mm, uh, uh, it's very uh, you know you have Ted Green, but uh, and uh, but this is another thing he doesn't use tapping mm. at all, and uh, you have new possibilities, so it sounds completely different. Yes. It's it's like a different instrument mm. or something. Uh, so it's not ten gre Ted Green uh, thing. It's another thing, and uh, this is my thing. And uh, I, when I do workshops, for example, I always talk about that. Do your own thing. It's most uh, valuable thing in music. And sometimes, uh, for example, critics, uh, I, I get critics from people who who doesn't have it. Yeah, for sure. Yes, well, because uh, because uh, there is some kind of. Uh, <laughs> Well, I think honestly, a lot of that is just sheer envy. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, so you got to the stage where you developed your two-handed technique, and then you were starting to transfer that into improvisation. So, um, when we last spoke a couple of years ago, and you talked about your playing, I remember the things you were working on then were things like um, uh, rhythmic displacement. You talked to me about mm -hmm. displacing things by a sixteenth note either yes. way. So, <clears throat> when when you're when you're improvising, you're improvising both hands you're yes. within the harmonic structure. Yes, uh, I see only uh, functions, mm -hmm. so uh, it's real book uh, scores uh, kind of thing. And uh, I, I got a team with, which is uh, not important for me. Important is uh, harmonic structure. Mm -hmm. of, and uh, uh, I play all the time over harmonic structure and uh, uh, both parts are improvised. It's like maybe a little bit like uh, Bach improvisation, mm -hmm. but uh, Bach was more uh, in form of fuge or something like this. Mm -hmm. uh, th here is another thing. The hymn is m m more uh, form from uh, jazz improvisation. Yes. It's, it's more like this. Yes. And uh, I built on it. So I am looking for new ways of articulation used in uh, both uh, parts, new way of uh, timing, new way of rhythm, of pools and I'm looking for new things in music which is very easy if you get bass in counterpoint. Sure, sure. So um, I asked you this earlier on today, when you're thinking about improvisation you're really not thinking about scales particularly. Yes, uh, th th they don't exist for me right. at the moment. Right. I uh, Because scales uh, generally um, if you if try any counterpoint with scales, yeah, then you will, for sure, you will never use it again uh -huh. because it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You will need another key. Uh, I mean, it's possible in scales. For example, Alan Holdsworth does it in scales, but it, he doesn't it in, but in two parts, in three parts. Uh, and it will be extremely difficult to do Alan Holdsworth thing with counterpoint. Yeah, so, I don't, I don't so think it's really to it's, think about it together. It's probably impossible. So, so, so what I was going to ask was, when you're, when you're playing in this way and you're playing through changes, uh, how much of that thinking is mental, that you're aware of the chord and you're aware of what notes are in the chord, and how much of that is just sheerly guided by your intuition or your ear, or is it a combination of both things? This, this, is, uh, this is the most important question. Uh, 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 I, uh, when I started to play counterpoint, I discover a simple method because I I really need something really simple. If you if you want to play two parts, mm. you need very simple tool to have hard tones with uh, one part and with another part, mm. and you have to be conscious which hard tone you play. Mm. And I I I I needed very simple tool 
to get that notes. And this is what this is fundamental question about improvisation, uh, improvise, improvisation, and uh, uh, and on composing. When you compose on, or, or improvising, you have to know that notes if you want to be good, mm. especially if you improvise. And uh, the method was very simple. I took I took chord tones and split it in two groups. Mm -hmm. And in first group, I have uh, ninth uh, root and uh, seventh. So mm -hmm. seventh root and nine. Mm -hmm. For example, for mm -hmm. an a, a minor, it's first group. And the second group is third and fifth. Between two hands, we're talking about here. Yes, right? th this is left hand method. Ah, okay, <laughs> okay, it's, okay. It's okay. like, but it's working uh, mm -hmm. even if I play classical guitar, for example, it's working all the time. And this is this is very simple because you 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 use only two strings. Every group is one string. First uh, group, yeah. then changing string, another group, and then you, you have you have all all the uh, vertical and horizontal because vertical you have the same two positions. So the second position is uh, what you play in second group. Mm -hmm. You have only two positions. And the, the method was, uh, I have guidelines with first finger. The second in group was uh, root and fifth, so uh, not very harmonic notes. Uh, it's, it's, only, it's only very, uh, you know, in background. Mm -hmm. It's in the background all the time. And third note is ninth. So it's a controversial note which have to be prepared. It's nice then. You, if you play just, uh, it uh, doesn't sound good. So good. Yes. And uh, then I, I start to practice every tune with that method, left hand. And right hand, I have another one. So I change uh, uh, numbers of fingers. So first finger is playing neutral note, right, like root and fifth. Second one is controversial note, and third is guide tone. And I have uh, six. It's C major, for example. So you have root, ninth, third, uh, fifth, six, and seventh. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is six. And I play left hand with first method, right hand with another one. So you have full chord. Uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. And uh, the most important thing is that the, the notes are not fixed. So uh, it's not always seventh with first finger. If you f uh, if you play another chord, for example A six, then six is seventh. So six uh, has the same rule as seventh. It is guide tone then, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and uh, and uh, you play mm -hmm. and use it the same way like you use seventh. And uh, even Frédéric Chopin knew knew, uh, knew that, for example, when you f uh, when you play G thirteen. Then you don't have to use a fifth at yeah, all. Yeah. So in my method, when you see fifth, you can uh, you can change it to six. Okay. So okay. so it's method of five notes, ah, not ma not met not methods of fifth and then seventh and something. Mm -hmm. So you have five important notes <coughs> on every function, and this is one of the best simple method of learning harmony. It's because on the piano you have three black keys and two black keys and in every moment when you play piano you know where the keys are mm -hmm. so when i play guitar i i see something like piano okay okay all so the time all the time i have three notes group and two notes group and first will be always uh, guide tone second one will be neutral and third will be uh, for example controversial okay so so although what you're talking about probably sounds very complicated, people are not used to this way of thinking, what you've actually got is a system which somewhat simplifies your harmonic yes. thinking and, and enables you to, to play basically any harmony on the instrument yes. split across two hands. Yes, and, uh, you, you can get impossible things with the harmony uh -huh. playing that system. You, you don't have to play any scale at all at the moment mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you, you got a very <coughs> nice tone, always musical and uh, for example, I have students, I have music school and uh, uh, over 200 students which know the system. And I have even uh, old, uh, uh, eight uh, years old girl playing jazz standards, for example. Wow, where is, with where that is, system? Yes, where, where is the 20 functions, for example. 
<laughs> and uh, she plays very simple melody. It's something like, you know, when uh, you play Atom Leaves, it's something like... And that's so. And that's a simple but very nice melody yeah, yes, yes. for eight years old. And it's harmonically outlined. Yes. And you have you got everything, and you can solo. And even if you play blues, you you just do, you have to add blue notes to the seventh chords. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I had to do that last night. On that. is when we saw your performance last night it's obvious that you're improvising a lot mm -hmm. but um, do you have like an arrangement like an initial arrangement or is there just there isn't really an arrangement of a written part? There is, there is no arrangements right. it's my rule um, even my, my idea for, for the teams of, uh, of uh, is it's to play team and improvisation in second part over team uh -huh. so uh -huh. yes, it's my okay. newest idea for playing teams and uh, when we met last time, I didn't play like this. Uh -huh. And uh, on last gig, I played a lot so, of. So even when you're playing the theme, though, that's yes. improvised as well. Uh, no, well, no. Well, the melody, the, the melody. melody, melody in one part uh -huh. is fixed. Yes. Almost fixed. Yes. And in second part, I improvise. Yeah. And if something went wrong, even team is improvised then. <laughs> 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 it's because uh, this is uh, I I will. Uh, improvisation is my world, yes. and I will play even simple, very simple improvisation. Uh, it's I find it much better than playing chords yeah. or mm -hmm. arrangement parts like this. So w when I was watching you last night, and I was aware of the fact that you were you were improvising for the majority, and I, and I just thought it was just you up there with the guitar, two neck guitar playing, and I just thought, wow, that is amazingly risky. Yes. You're up on stage performing in front of a room full of people at a completely packed concert hall. And I was just thinking, this guy has basically got no safety net. He's just going up there playing these standards, and and it's almost like, it's, it just for me that felt really terrifying. The idea you go up there with no arrangement, and you just go, oh, well, I know these tunes, and I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna basically make the whole thing up as we go yes, along. Yes, the, the, yes. A lot of people don't really realize that playing like this it's difficult. Oof. One uh, one of my uh, the director uh, said uh, when I played on one guitar festival, he said. There is no many guitar players. I know Joe Pass. Uh, he said to me, uh, "There is no uh, many guitar players who improvise mm -hmm. and taking a chair, <laughs> going on stage and play one hour uh, alone improvisation. Oof. There is only few yeah, guitar risky. players. Risky. Like it's very the, risky." So, so this is just like a personal question. When you go up to perform, are you nervous or do you just go uh, up and play? It's a difficult question. I am always nervous yeah. and. Uh, um, but uh, this is this is another thing that most of people think about. Uh, there, for me, worst situation is loss of concentration uh -huh. because I, I know it so well. Sometimes I, I uh, when I'm tired or after a long day of working, I have to play a gig like like yesterday. Uh -huh. There is some moments in a gig when I lost concentration, mm -hmm. and if it happens, uh, I have to get get back yeah and this is the worst case but um, I, I i am not sure how to figure it out but i will well i don't think anybody I, I think i think the very nature of what you're doing because it is so so exposed and so open and just so incredibly risky that uh, i think that's going to happen i don't think i don't think you, think you could ever you could ever not have a situation where you you play for that long with that level of complexity and not have some sort of moment where it's just like Yes, uh, but uh, I have seen many Joe Pass gigs, and uh, he he doesn't uh, he isn't perfect too. So no, there is uh, there is uh, I think that this is normal in improvisation. I think it is as well. But uh, you have to minimize that for sure, for sure. Yes. But I think it would be unrealistic to expect someone to go on stage and never make a mistake. Uh, yes. Well, yeah. if you watch if you watch, for instance, something like a classical guitar player like John Williams, I mean, he really doesn't make mistakes, but he's playing set repertoire, yes. which he plays the same every single time. Yes. So it's not the same it's thing. It's not at the all. same thing. Yeah, yes. uh, it's risky. It's, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the uh, imagination during the improvising gig, 
uh, should be 100% active all the time. Mm. So you you listen to it by ear. And uh, one great thing about this method I show you, I told you, is that you start to hear every chord tone when mm -hmm. somebody plays or sing you. Mm -hmm. For example, singer is singing and you hear, oh, th this is third, this yeah. is fifth. And now this is root. Uh -huh. And you know everything about composer. Is she, is he or she good? Mm -hmm. Or uh, is the melody nice or not? You, you decide if you like it and you don't need that skill. But if you judge, if, for example, if you injury some uh, competition, mm -hmm. then it's good to know yeah. that. <laughs> well, your oral acuity is certainly better than mine. There's one other thing that I wanted to ask is, and we talked about this earlier, is that on the gig last night, I noticed you're doing some things with the time. Um, so can you just talk about some of the ways that you move the time around? Uh, yes, uh, we talked about uh, this last time and uh, the method was uh, playing after the beat asyncopation But when you have two parts and one part is playing, uh, uh, for example, m maybe I will show it's a beat and then we, you have a metronome part, mm -hmm. you have syncopation and n now you start to play this, this rhythm behind the beat. So old, old uh, offbeat. So something like this. So, so th and this syncopation is split across the hands. It sounds like yes. So the, the, are, you, are you moving? You're moving one of the hands like a sixteenth forward yes, or a sixteenth yes, behind. Yes. Yes. One part is uh, shifted by sixteen, uh -huh. and both parts are, are after the beat. Oh, uh, okay. A beat is inside. Uh huh. Uh huh. It's. So here's a question for you then, because obviously you're almost then you're keeping you're keeping a sort of central core pulse inside them, but then but being aware that you've shifted the time forward or back. Yes. So is it hard to maintain that internal pulse? Yes. Yeah. It's uh, I hear internal pulse all the time. I hear metronome yeah. when I play this this okay. kind of thing, and it sounds great. So I I think it's one of the most interesting my discover uh, things I have discovered in, during the practicing. Sure. A counterpoint. You, you after geek, you said that uh, the timing was interesting. It, it was. It was just. I mean, that uh, some there's some things that Adam does which I, I really understand. I probably understand the harmony he plays better because um, I'm quite attuned to that. But some of the rhythm, rhythmic things he was doing, I was like, I, I was aware of the fact that the, the things were being done to the pulse, but I wasn't quite sure exactly what was being done. So what else do you do? You, you. I mean, what it seemed to me, or what it sounded like to me, like you took the time. And then, for instance, you would turn the uh, you would turn the say to, for instance the dotted crotchet. You seem to turn that into the quarter note, mm -hmm. and then that became the quarter note. And you yes, do things like yes. that as well. Uh, it's uh, it's poly uh, it's called poly pulse uh, for me. Uh -huh. And uh, I saw it. Some jazz players playing like that. Mm -hmm. It's uh, when you have one pulse, one, two, three, four. Then you uh, have poly rhythm. One. Two, yeah, three, the new then pulse. new pulse, two, uh -huh. three, and yeah. then you got no uh, new new swing, mm -hmm. new uh, new syncopation rhythm, new uh, third uh, triple, new, new, new triple, triplets, yeah. new yes, triples, yeah, yeah. new new eights, and uh, you play. Uh, uh, so, new so, pulse. so just just so that people can understand this, what he's talking about is taking the original pulse playing a subdivision against that pulse, then treating the new subdivision as if that's the new pulse, yes. and then applying a further subdivision on top of that. Yes, yeah. yes. I mean, but how do, how do you keep track of the original pulse then? Uh, you have to hear very good uh, this polyrhythm used to create new pulse. Mm -hmm. And if you hear that, then you easily go back. Yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not very hard to get into new but pulse. Hard to but get out. <laughs> yes, when you play over changes. Oh, okay. <laughs> when you play well, over changes, I mean, I and even even sometimes this situation, then you come to free. And uh, for example, in uh, for, for example, you take three notes from four. So you have one, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. One, two, three. One, yeah. two, yeah. three. And yeah. then. Play over changes that. Yeah, I heard you do that last Yes, night. yes, I, I did, did it. Do that last few, night. Few. It's simple polyrhythm, but when you treat it at new pulse, it's hard. Yeah, for sure. That's quite amazing. So, um, uh, just to plug one of your products, I believe you've got a very thick theory book, have you not? Yes, it's basically it's in Adam Polish. Polara method. Now, it is in Polish. 
But I've had a look at this thing and it's what? How many pages is on there? Uh, over three hundred. Uh -huh. uh, I think I think three three hundred twenty pages, and there is uh, thirty pages about my method, mm -hmm. and the rest is about elements of music. So about these okay. polypools, about uh, dynamics, about accenting, about uh, possible. And I I think that uh, I have uh, quite. Uh, a common uh, vision of uh, all music theory and it's much simple mm -hmm. uh, much simpler that most of people thinks up so if, uh, a lot of people thinking that music theory is so hard then you never will be master of it uh -huh. but uh, if you if you have methods like this with the three notes and two notes then you very fast learning playing over changes and it changed everything in education. Mm -hmm. you, you know that you, you have to, not, for example, create your own style based on it, your own scales, uh, because uh, hard tones you get only on down beats. On uh, up beats you can play anything, mm -hmm. any, any note, mm -hmm. and it's okay. So I think we're pretty much wrapped up. Do you have any plans to get this book translated into English? Um, no, but I will tra translate to English uh, maybe video course about my method. Uh -huh. uh, we, I did in Polish at the moment 12 lessons about that and uh, maybe I will translate it to English. It's because I don't want uh, to... Uh, it's it's smart and uh, I, I will... Uh, I, I will you know, after my dad, I will be sure. Come on, you're not dead yet. You're not <laughs> yes, dead yet. Yes, but Come on. I will have to some proof that this method exists. Right, and some yeah. people legacy, use, legacy. Use. Yeah, don't, 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 don't die on us anytime soon. No, if you don't mind. But, but uh, I think that uh, even uh, this method is much smarter than my playing in common. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's, uh, it works on bass guitar, on piano, right, on yeah, sure. it's for singers. It's, a, it's just an approach. It's yes. just a way of looking at things. Yes, uh -huh. yes. And you don't need any other scale. You use scale for harmonic, for... Uh, 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 yeah, okay. uh, This is... I use scales for that, mm -hmm. but I don't use scales for playing over that. Yeah, no, I can hear that. All right, well, I think that will do us. It's an absolute pleasure, Adam. You're, you're just an amazing, amazing musician. One of the best players I've ever seen. And certainly a, an extremely unique take on music with an absolutely original and individual style. All right, guys, thank you so much. Adam. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure. See you later. See you.